What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to measure the execution time of an algorithm in Python, which can be very useful to evaluate the performance of algorithms or to terminate them using time as a stopping criterion. So let us get right into it. All right, so the idea is the following. We have some complex problem that we want to solve and the optimal algorithm. So the algorithm that yields the optimal solution is way too complex for us to use. It doesn't yield a solution in a reasonable amount of time. It has exponential runtime complexity maybe. And because of that, we come up with heuristics and approximation algorithms. And the idea is now we want to evaluate them. We want to compare them in terms of performance. And this can be done in different ways. One way to do that is you can just let them run and compare the final solution after they have terminated uh, and say, okay, this one is better because the solution or the, the quality of the solution is better or the fitness is higher or the cost is lower, whatever. And another way is to use time as a, um, as a criterion. So you can either say, okay, which one terminates faster and yields a good solution faster. Or another way to do that is you can just say, okay, I give you X amount of minutes, X amount of seconds, and I want to see which one of you produces the best solution after these X seconds, minutes, whatever. And this is what we're going to learn how to do in Python today. How can we define time as a stopping criterion? How can we say, I want you to run five minutes, five seconds, whatever, and I want to compare the solution in the end? Because it's not as simple as just, you know, starting and stopping the time. You need to use multiprocessing to do it, actually. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start by importing time, obviously, and we're going to import multi processing. And the idea is we have some approximation algorithm. In my case, it's not going to be an actual approximation algorithm. We're not going to solve any problem. What we're going to do is we're just going to count. So we're going to say counter equals zero. And then we're going to say while true, it's basically always going to quote unquote, improve on the solution by adding one. So we're going to say counter plus equals one. And this is our simulated, basically our simulated um, fitness increase, because with every iteration, we increase the fitness by one. Uh, in actuality, of course, you would have something like a TSP, for example, a traveling salesman problem, and you would basically change the connections, you would do something to find a good solution. In the end, you would get the cost of the solution. So the distance traveled, uh, and you would then return this or you would then keep track of this performance metric instead of just counting. But for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to count now. And we're going to always print, which of course will take some time. So in an actual approximation algorithm, you would not always print a solution. But now we're just going to print the counter here. So that we have some delay so that we're actually doing something here. Uh, whatever that approximation algorithm is, whatever that heuristic is, we're just going to use this now as our thing that we want to evaluate. And of course, we would have multiple of those. So we would have approximation algorithm A, B, C, and so on. And what we want to do now is we want to say, I'm going to have a main section here, if name equals main, what we want to do here is we're just going to say, okay, I want to run this. And after five seconds, I want to terminate and see what the quality of the solution is. So how high the counter um, is. And what we're going to do for that is we're going to say process equals multiprocessing dot process. And the target is going to be our approximation algorithm. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, I want to define a start time, this is just going to be our time perf counter here. Um, and this is basically now going to say, um, this is now going to just evaluate the time so that we can actually see how long it runs. So this is something that we can do also without multiprocessing. You can measure the time that you need for the execution without having multiprocessing involved. You can just run the function. You can have start, uh, start and end. So you can say start equals end equals. In between, you just call the approximation algorithm. You don't need any multiprocessing for that. What you do need multiprocessing for is to intercept, to actually stop the process from running after a certain number of time. Uh, after a certain amount of time. So we're going to just do this here to measure the actual time. So to see that it actually terminates after x seconds, uh, just as a confirmation for us. But the actual magic happens with this, we're going to start the process. And then we're going to use time sleep in the main process. So time sleep does not affect the algorithm, the algorithm is running in this while true loop in a separate process. But in our main process here, we're going to say time sleep, 
And then we're going to define, okay, after 10 seconds, for example, or let's just use five here. After five seconds, I want the process to stop and I want to evaluate the solution. So I could say process dot terminate afterwards. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, you know, track the time and I'm going to say print end minus start. And in the end, you can just say process join um, just for the sake of completion here. And what you're going to see here is that the process is going to run. And after five seconds, it's going to terminate. And there you go. So you can see it's 5.02. But you can say, okay, first of all, the process starts here, then the, the sleeping sort of five seconds start actually here, and they end actually here. Um, or actually, they end here. So you do have some extra time here. But this actually happens exactly five seconds. So you have almost five seconds, almost precisely five seconds. Um, and this is something that you can use to compare different algorithms. So for example, I might have an algorithm B here. So algorithm B, algorithm A. And what I want to do here is I want to do plus two, for example, but what I want to do is I want to also, you know, maybe it's a little bit more complex to increase by two. So I'm going to sleep for 0 0.2 seconds. Um, and we can see if this is now better or worse, this would be a comparison. So we could say here algorithm A, and we can either copy all of this or we can run it separately. So I can run a a couple of times. Um, for five seconds, and I can see okay, in the case of a, uh, I didn't print the time now. Why is that? Why didn't it print the time? And why did it increase like this? Let me just run this again. Okay, now it worked. Uh, but you can see after five seconds, I get this number here. So roughly 3 million, I can run this again, you know, we can run this 10 times and compare get the average or something. Uh, but you should get something fairly consistent here. And then you can do the same thing with algorithm B 10 times and get the average or 100 times and get the average. Uh, and in this case, you can see this is way slower, obviously, this is not going to yield a result nearly as good, but maybe I can increase this by not two but maybe by 2000. And then we would get a different result. But I think it's still way worse, obviously. Um, but yeah, this is this is just now a trivial example that's not actually real what you would have in your uh, in reality is you would have some graph theory problems, some traveling salesman or vertex cover or graph coloring or uh, vehicle routing or something and you would have different heuristics, approximation algorithms, genetic algorithms and colony optimization, some fancy stuff. And you want to see, okay, if I only have 10 seconds of time, which one of them produces on average the best result. And this is how you can do that in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.